first word that comes to mind thinking about wrapping up Gossip Girl is just emotion. It's a big, big emotion. Immediately just hit with that rush of what it was like making the pilot, what it was like meeting everybody for the first time, what it was like when the show first went on the air, and all your hopes and expectations, and I think with Gossip Roll, you know, all of that it exceeded our wildest imagination of, of what we hoped for the show. It's really a show that made its mark. To have been on Gossip Girl for six years, first as the art director and then as the production designer, has been a tremendous experience. It's exciting to look back in celebration of, of the last six years and see where we've come and, and prospect of what's in the future. Every moment was impactful. You know, every day that we got to continue to go to set, um, you know, we found out the show was picked up, and then um, we thought, okay, we get to live here. Never did we think that we would be doing it for six years. So every time we got renewed for another season, it wasn't just getting renewed for another season, but it was selfish personally, because we thought, yes, we get to live in New York another year, we get to get paid for it, don't tell. <laughs> I really had the feeling from the very beginning that this show was going to be not only a hit, but really sort of tap into some kind of cultural Zeitgeist. I remember the first year when we first saw our pictures on a building. And Ed's apartment was on 23rd Street and it was close to the West Side Highway. We turned that corner one time and it was like us 40 feet tall on the side of a building. It was all six and we we're just kind of like. I remember the response being uh, just so overwhelming and it became such a cultural phenomenon so so quickly. One of the first times we shot down on uh, Central Park South and we suddenly just have like these crowds of people and that's, that's a, that was a strange thing. Fun to think about all of the actors and how they've kind of grown over the years. Their characters have grown. We were very fortunate that all of the actors that we really believed in worked out so well in their roles. I mean, at a certain point, as you see Blake Lively on the cover of, you know, Vogue magazine's best dress, you're like, where does Serena Vanderwoodson end and Blake Lively begin? Blake has so many positive qualities of being down to earth and charming and kind of a regular goofy girl that we felt that if our Serena had some of Blake's kind of sunniness and cheerfulness and and sweetness that it would be a lot easier to root for Serena in the show who was someone who things came very easily to her, she didn't have to work very hard, she didn't always realize how her actions were impacting others, she was a little bit of a selfish character. It's not what it looked like. Let me guess, there's an explanation? Yes, of course, I was just trying to help him make someone jealous. Who could capture better Blair Waldorf's neurosis and scheming with pathos than, you know, than Leighton Meester? This is so weird. I don't normally do plots against people. Don't worry, Virgin. I'll talk you through it. And Leighton is just so brilliant at digging out those moments that are more subtle, where you see she's saying one thing, but you can tell that she's feeling something else. Your deductive reasoning skills are perfect for a place like Brown. Westwick is so iconic as Chuck Bass, so much fun with that part. I've booked the penthouse for us. What do you say we christen my legacy? More guys than they care to admit probably model themselves off of Chuck Bass. It was interesting and dimensional, and it felt like he had the potential to really make this character something that they weren't necessarily in the pilot. In the pilot, he really is written as the villain. He doesn't have layers. He's not, you don't have moments where you're alone with Chuck, like wondering what he's thinking. I love it when you talk dirty. You just love when a girl talks to you. Actually, I prefer them when they're not talking. You know, Chase Crawford obviously was a real heartthrob and brought so much warmth and vulnerability to a spoiled rich kid part and made him far more likable. You're right. I'm sorry. 
You can count on me always. He really made you hope that things worked out for Nate and that he found his way and then he got the things that he wanted. We wouldn't have had that with an actor who, who didn't have that himself. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know. The best latte, the best slice, best pot dealer, but first, the most important lesson of all, how to ride the subway. And actually, you know, as Dan Humphrey became, uh, you know, uh, certainly a guy I can relate to. As he is the outsider, he's somebody who, when he's pointing out what's absurd about the world, you have to kind of believe that he's smart enough to get it, and also he's got to deliver it in a way that you find it kind of amusing and not just critical or judgmental. And Penn was somebody who could really deliver that. Every dirty detail, exactly as it occurred. The world of the Upper East Side is unlike any world that, that I ever knew, but the books really laid it out very well. They're juicy and salacious and fun, and then, you know, you step into Eric Damon's costume design studio and you see, okay, well, the people that wear these clothes have to be very bold and very confident and very wealthy. I think every actor definitely has a different relationship with the clothing and with the costume designer. Um, I feel like the clothing really is kind of the actor's coat of arms, and when they put on their clothes, it kind of helps them become the character. I think as an actor, it, it always helps. I think, you know, the pair of shoes you're wearing, the clothes you're wearing, your hair, your makeup, all of that helps you feel more like someone else. Blair Waldorf, I don't think, could be any further away from who Leighton Meester is. not That's not how I was raised at all. I'm from South Florida, you know, like, we, that's not what it's like. <laughs> The scenes that stand out in my mind are scenes that don't even necessarily have a lot of storytelling in them. In the pilot, I love kids in the back of the limo when they're driving to the Kiss on the Lips party. There's a scene where Dan and Serena are kissing in the meatpacking district and the camera pans up and it's the cobblestone streets. It was such a romantic moment and it was such a great sort of capturing of of young people in New York City, and I think it really spoke to everything. I love Dan looking up at Serena in her sparkly gold dress. I love the montage that we built, intercutting the flashback of Serena and Nate in the Campbell apartment with Blair discovering the truth about Nate and Serena, and Serena struggling with Chuck in the kitchen of the Palace Hotel. At the end of six seasons, all you can do is be very, very grateful for the opportunity to be on the air for that long, to have made a show that people wanted to watch for that long, something that's very rare, and all you can do is be proud. In the final season, it was fun, but also a challenge because realizing we only had 10 episodes left, we really had to think about what are the things that we've done before that we know we want to do again because they're kind of Gossip Girl classics. So we knew we wanted to do one more fashion show, especially because Blair was now in charge of her mother's company. We knew we wanted to do Cotillion because that's just an event that we love. And then there were things, that, well, what have we never done that we do want to do? And we finally shot Inside the Met, which is something that Josh and I had written in two. I always wanted to shoot at a private airport. That just felt like part of our world. The sets have improved over the seasons just by knowing our characters better. You know, every step of the way, we weren't making general sets anymore. We were making very, very specific sets for individual characters. We definitely had some big picture ideas about where we wanted the characters to end, what we wanted to see in terms of the characters' hopes and dreams as they articulated them, you know, even all the way back into the pilot. But anyone who says they know exactly where their show is going to end uh, is lying because you don't know. I thought that the season one finale was going to be a Serena, Blair, Nate triangle culminating in this big war, but then you watch the pilot and when Serena tells Nate that she didn't come back for him, I kind of believe her. Serena. No. No. But you're back now. I didn't come back for you.
there's a point in time where a story naturally runs its course. I don't think anybody ever thought that the show would just go on for 20 years. Steph and I had always kind of kicked it around the idea of series finales in general and what do people want to see. And I think the idea was to give as much closure as possible, to answer as many questions, to, to have the opportunity to see where these characters end up, uh, who they end up with, and of course, most importantly, who is Gossip Girl. I may not have much time left, but some things are forever. We weren't sure if that's something that audiences would actually want to know or if they wouldn't want to know. And if they didn't want to know, we didn't want to kind of like foist this on them. I have asked Stephanie a lot about <laughs> who Gossip Girl is and um, have had my own ideas about it, but she, she won't tell me. She won't even give me a hint. The finale was a big episode. There's obviously a lot of people coming back for the episode, a lot of locations to shoot at. There was some challenges in, in securing some of those locations. But all in all, I think the episode feels huge. So much that I think will be so satisfying to fans of the show. If you look back on the series at a whole, you can see it's a long and winding road, but everyone ended up where they were supposed to be. We make a show about young people for young people. It occupies a very important place in their lives. You know, there's people who were in high school or in college or out of college who watch the show. And I think those characters and those actors, the fashion, the music, all of that will remain with, with the audience who watch the show. a world and characters that people care about, to be able to see fashion trends, to just kind of feel like you're a part of a, a larger conversation that the world is having. Once you've done something for six years, ten months out of a year, uh, it just feels like the end of a season. And, and yesterday they were tearing down the Humphrey loft, and that was the first time that, that it really felt like, wow, this is, this is actually coming to an end. It was sad, man. It was like the, all my Lincoln Hawk records are off the walls, and all these photos that we all contributed to, to make up this family are still there. You can tell that they didn't have the heart to just rip them off the wall yet, put them in boxes, never to be seen again. The great thing when you work on a series for so long is you really become a family. You get to know their kids and you get to know what's going on in their lives and you experience milestones with them. And so it's a really very deep relationship. So when you get to the end of that, everyone has a sense of loss. Stopping time. I'll miss just the richness of that, the love that I feel when I come to work and, and the sort of sacredness of our space here and how we've all created and how we've all connected. Like anything, when you're not going to be around people that you love and respect, then you're not, you know, you're going to miss them, aren't you? who we were together and we made mistakes and we found beautiful things the, the way you grow up with your friends we've experienced together but in this particular way where we're all going through that heightened reality together the unfortunate part is that we won't see each other every day but I think I'm okay not seeing my friends at 4 45 in the morning <laughs> I know that it has changed my life in a lot of ways but it hasn't changed me I've been uh, actually very touched by how grateful they are and you know at the end how appreciative they were for you know the opportunity to be on the show it's just that family aspect of it you know and it, i mean it's obviously at the time a time of change but it's just it's just going to be weird not to have it was a perfect segment i'm just really grateful to have had it So, Gossip Girl.